SwiftUI gives us a dedicated picker type for working with dates called Date Picker. And yes, Swift does have a special type just for storing dates and times called date. To try it out, go ahead and make an at state property storing a date of your choosing. For example, we'll say at state private var wake up equals date dot now, the current date and time. We could then bind that to a date picker like this. Date picker, a label of please enter a date and a selection bound to dollar wake up. Now I'll go ahead and build and run that code now so you can see it in action. I should all being well see, there's our prompt, please enter a date, plus these interactive pickers for a date option here, let's say December 25th, and a time option here. Let's do uh, 5.30 p.m. perhaps. Boom. Now you might think this date looks ugly, particularly in a form where you have like a section header, so you might try and remove it. And you can do that in theory by just blanking out this label here, but please don't do that because when you run it back, you might find it won't do what you expect. Um, it's still gonna leave a nice big space where the label ought to go. And worse, when VoiceOver comes along, the iOS screen reader, it won't know how to announce your date picker anymore because there's no title. If you desperately want the label gone, the right thing to do is to leave it in place and add a modifier dot labels hidden. That way, it will hide the label visually, but still keep it there for voiceover so it understands what's happening. So we get this nice centered approach now. Now, date pickers provide us with a few options to customize what they do. Uh, first, we can say display components to decide what kind of options users could see. As you've seen by default, we have a display components of date plus hour and minute. We can also say display components should be just date. Don't show the time options like that. Or just hour and minute. Just show the hour time. Whatever works for you. And so we could say, please enter a time with hour and minute and bang, it handles times perfectly. Finally, there is an in parameter that works just like the range we had in Stepper. We can provide this with a date range and it will make sure the user selects a date within that range inclusive if needed. Now we've been using ranges for a while, okay? But it's always been things like one through five or zero through 10. We can also make ranges from dates. For example, we could say uh, func example date here. Uh, we'll go ahead and make a date instance that is today plus one day. So we'll say let tomorrow be date dot now dot adding time interval 86 400. That is the number of seconds in one day approximately. It's not perfectly accurate because of, you know, uh, daylight saving is time and leap seconds and so forth, but it's close enough. We can now make a range between now and the same time tomorrow by saying let range equals date dot now through tomorrow. And this range option is really, really useful with date pickers because we can say only let them select a date between these two ranges. But there's something even more useful because Swift allows us to make one-sided ranges. Ranges where we specify either the start or the end, but not both, leaving Swift to infer the other side. For example, go back to our date picker again, here, uh, let's say we want to have a, uh, uh, any date from now onwards. Any date in the future is fine, just, just not before now. We can just say selection wake up in the range date dot now dot dot dot. That's our range. So we can't select older dates, only future dates. And so now when I'm in here, I can go and select or try to select, all being well. There we go and you'll see all the previous dates are all grayed out to me. It is not possible to do that.